Championship Sunday. This uh, So let me first start by saying, obviously, last week um, in the divisional round, we had arguably the best weekend of NFL football that we've ever seen. Uh, just uh, four games, four walk-off game winners, whether field goals or touchdowns, capped off by arguably one of the, if not the greatest quarterback duel we've ever seen in the playoffs between Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen. Okay, great. What that does though, that sets the table for championship weekend on the NFC side, Rams versus 49ers. And on the uh, uh, AFC side, uh, Bengals versus the Chiefs. Um, this particular episode, I'm gonna talk about Rams Niners pretty quick. Not gonna go too deep into it, just give you some brief thoughts. And then obviously we'll we'll talk about it again after the games. But I just wanna say that with, I think we need to temper our expectations for championship weekend based on what we saw in the divisional round realistically the NFL can't possibly repeat what we just saw that was that was beyond incredible but uh we've got two great matchups um coincidentally the, this one I'm about to talk about the uh Niners and the and the Rams that's a divisional matchup so these teams know each other extremely well uh we've seen the 49ers beat the Rams the last six times uh for in that they've played each other Seems like Kyle Shanahan really has Sean McVay's number. Um, both of them kind of regarded as young offensive geniuses, genii, let's say gurus, <laughs> young offensive gurus in the game, really just um, tremendous in their play design. Obviously, uh, Shanahan and the Niners doing more in the run game, just being so creative in the way they do that in their outside zone run game. Obviously, a lot of those, um, uh, a lot of those schemes came from Kyle Shanahan's dad, Mike Shanahan, two-time Super Bowl winner with the uh, Denver Broncos. Uh, but it seems like Kyle Shanahan has almost taken it to a new level in terms of the way he utilizes motion, the different types of uh, uh, players he utilizes in the run game, the way he uses receivers in the blocking game. Has Debo Samuel, his best wide receiver, arguably his best offensive player, uh, really integrated well into the running game in terms of what he can do with the ball in his hands. Just just tremendous. Um, it's so interesting from a, a play design standpoint. Um, when Mike Shanahan was the coach of the Broncos and he was winning championships, he had a bell cow back with Terrell Davis that you could hand it to, you know, 25, 30 times a game. Um, and then, of course, he also had the benefit of having an all-time great head quarterback with John Elway. And clearly... His son, Kyle, doesn't have that with uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. We'll get to him in a second. Um, so th the matchup itself, obviously both teams very physical in the front seven. Uh, the Niners can be had on the back end, but that's why they're so great up front because they're able to uh, really <clears throat> get to the quarterback. Bosa, Armstead, those guys can really do it. They can create so much pressure. Now, You've got a guy like Matt Stafford on the other side who has tremendous arm talent, can stand in there, can make all the throws. We saw that last week uh, against Tampa Bay. Um, now, with that said, again, the Niners still have defeated the uh, Rams the last six times they played them. So not sure how much difference that'll make. But, you know, at this level, when you have just the far superior quarterback play, I think that means a lot. And then as well, you have... Uh, in general, you have a better receiving core and the game is built for that. Now the game is built for receiving and passing. Now, with that said, the Niners physicality and their ability to run the football and keep explosive offenses off the field really helps a lot too, in terms of slowing down uh, great offenses like that. Um, Sean McVay, I believe as a head coach is 44, 45 and one when his team leads at halftime, guess what the one is <laughs> uh, uh, three, four, Two or three weeks ago against the 49ers, they were up 17 nothing at the half. The 49ers stormed back in the second half and won that game. So I, I, there's a couple of ways we can look at this. We can look at this and say the 49ers are going to be brimming with confidence, knowing that if they play their game, come in physical on both fronts, defensive and offensive line, that they can continue to do what they've been doing. They know they have what it takes to beat this team. And we can look at it on the flip side and say, okay, the Rams coming into this game, are they nervous? Are they worried knowing that they've lost six times in a row? Or are they saying today is our day to finally break through? Uh, there's been a lot of concern, uh, not concern, but Matt Stafford was brought to the Rams for a reason. 
And this is the reason to get these guys to the Super Bowl. And well, not even just to get them there to win it. The Rams have given up a lot in terms of mortgage in their future uh, to get their hands on Matt Stafford, to get their hands on Von Miller, uh, OBJ. Well, not so much OBJ. They picked him up off waivers. But the point is, they've got a lot of firepower on this team. If this was an NBA context, you'd almost call it a super team that they've built. Um, but they've really done a great job in putting everything they possibly could into winning now, right? We know that there are teams that will mortgage the future for an, a, a real opportunity to win now. And the Rams are just two games away from doing that. One game away from appearing in the Super Bowl, two games from ho hoisting the Lombardi. Now, we look at it and we say, okay, Jared Goff got, you know, as quarterback, the Rams got to the Super Bowl with Jared Goff. But you look at Jared Goff and you look at uh, uh, Matt Stafford, there are plays that Stafford can make uh, from a mobility and arm talent perspective that Jared Goff just can't. And so for years in Detroit, you know, maybe we thought that Matt Stafford was a guy just uh, <laughs> FS1 analyst Rob Parker loves to call him Stat Padford. He covered him for years in Detroit, putting up tremendous numbers, making a tremendous amount of money, but not winning a playoff game until he arrived with the Rams. Coincidentally, uh, Jim Caldwell got them to the playoffs twice. Matt Stafford couldn't win a playoff game. Jim Caldwell still remains unhired as an NFL coach, but side issue for another day. Um, so now we see Matt Stafford. He's got all the weapons around him. He's got, you know, an offensive genius as a coach. He's got a great defense with him. Everything is in place. Is this the time that Matt Stafford can uh, get over the hump for himself and for his organization? Number one, getting to the Super Bowl. The Rams have been there. I think they were there want to say three years ago, um, uh, where they got beat by Brady and the Patriots, who didn't get beat by Brady and the Patriots in the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> well, I guess Philly fans can say we didn't. Anyway, um, Giants fans too. NFC East, coincidence, huh? Three losses in the Super Bowl, both came to the end. All three came to the NFC East. Never thought about that before. Regardless, um, so you look at it and you say, is this the time that Matt Stafford can get the Rams over the hump and to win their first Super Bowl. If they get to this one, this would be their uh, what fifth appearance in the Super Bowl in their franchise history, which is not bad. There's a lot of teams that have never been there. So, you know, that that's a plus for them. But does he have what it takes? Can the Rams put it together? And more than anything, can they get past the 49ers, which are their personal boogeymen? So on the other side, you look at it, um, Kyle Shanahan, obviously, uh, he's been there, but if he gets there, this would be his third time. Obviously he's been there as the, uh, OC with the, uh, Atlanta Falcons when, oh, here's a name again, Tom Brady and the Patriots came back and, uh, beat them after being down 28, three. Um, then he was there a couple of years ago with the 49ers when they lost to Pat Mahomes and the chiefs. And this is his opportunity to get back there. Does he get back there? And if he does, does he get over the hump and win this thing? Who knows? But uh, right now we're thinking about this particular matchup. And so if you know me, uh, if you've listened to the pod before, hopefully you have. And if you haven't and this is your first time, thanks for checking in. Um, we'll talk to you right at the end about how you can uh, keep up with the show. But anyway, if you know me and you know my mentality on football, very simple premise, stop the run run the ball. Now, of course, the Rams are able to run the ball with Cam Akers, very talented physical back and can also catch it out of the backfield. Does a lot of things Sean McVay likes, but um, Kyle Shanahan is determined to play in a phone booth. He wants to be extremely physical in terms of running the ball and stopping the run. Now, part of that may be because he doesn't yet believe in the quarterback that he has. I don't think he truly believes in Jimmy Garoppolo. We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo with opportunities to win the Super Bowl. Uh, he blew that with a terrible throw that if he would delivered it properly, would have been a touchdown, would have won the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. We have seen him in these past few uh, playoff games, the last two games, th this run that he's on right now, literally try to give the game away to the opposition, first to the Cowboys, then to the Packers. We've seen that. So we got to believe that Shanahan truly doesn't believe in Garoppolo. Also, the Rams... Uh, gave up the house, traded up to, not the Rams, I'm sorry, the 49ers gave up the house, traded up to get Trey Lance in the draft last year. Obviously, they are working to get him ready to be the guy going forward. Don't know exactly what's going to happen with Jimmy G. Maybe some of that depends on how ready they believe Trey Lance is. But again, 
you mortgage your future to get a guy that high, you better get him ready and get him out there. But separate issue. Um, I don't believe that Shanahan truly believes in Jimmy Garoppolo, which is why he now don't get me wrong, um, running the football, there's nothing wrong with that. And obviously, when you can run it effectively, and you can stop it, you can win football games. There's no question about that. Um, we've seen it, right. But I think a big part of that, again, is because he doesn't believe in Jimmy Garoppolo. So we'll see what happens. Um, so uh, getting to the end of this thing, I uh, don't want to talk too long. Um, let's just look at it. Uh, stop the run, run the ball, uber physical. Not to say the Rams are not physical on the defensive, defensive side of the football as well. You've got Von Miller, you've got Aaron Donald, two of the best pass rushers maybe in history. Um, these guys can get after you. Obviously, they have a great back end, uh, Jalen Ramsey. But you wonder just the way Shanahan designs plays and sets everything up and the way they execute and the way as long as the game is reasonably close, they never get away from what they do. And that's punishing you in the physical ground game and creating openings. And then, of course, You've got an all-world tight end like George Kittle um, who can make uh, multiple plays in the passing game. So this is going to be very interesting and uh, absolutely look forward to see how this comes out. If you're asking me for my pick, my common sense says that the offensive ability that we see from the Rams is going to prevail, especially in the modern NFL, the way it's officiated, the way the game is played. But I just, I have a hard time believing that Shanahan just simply doesn't have uh, Sean McVay's number and just the way they play, the the speed, the physicality, the ability to run the ball and kind of take it out of the hands of elite explosive offenses isn't going to somehow come out on top. And I don't think that Shanahan is going to come out and do the same things that he's been doing over the past six games that he's, you know, won against his team. I believe that he's going to have some wrinkles and some things that they're not ready for. So again, if you're asking me my pick, uh, I'm going to say 49ers close, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams win. I know that sounds like I'm hedging my bet. So let me be clear. I'm going to say, uh, take the 49ers close. I, I don't have a score. I don't really do that. Not into the gambling thing, but 49ers close. All right. Um, if you've enjoyed the show, please uh, click that like button and then click the subscribe in the lower right corner of your screen and uh, click that bell so you can be notified when uh, we drop new content on the platform as well. If you want the show in the audio only capacity, pretty much anywhere you want me, uh, you can get me uh, in the audio. Uh, look right here on the screen. These are all the places we're available and we're available at tons more. Also, uh, if your audio platform allows it, please give us a five-star rating. That puts us in a position to be raised higher in the algorithm so more people can find the show, all right? Thanks for tuning in. Also, if you loved it, don't keep it to yourself. Share it. And I'm out. Peace.